All right, it looks like we are ready to go for our bike ride. All right, guys, are you ready to go? Yes. Um, well, I, I think you guys are missing a little something, don't you think? What do you think it is? Hmm, um... I know! Snacks! Uh, 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 okay, fine. Go get your snacks. Go, go. Okay, okay, all right, fine. You got your snacks. I still think there's something that we're missing, guys. Think, what do you think we're missing? Oh yeah, water! Water! <laughs> fine, go get some water. Exactly the water I was thinking of. Good choice, guys. All right. Now, I still think you're missing one very important item for each of you. Can you guess? Kitten? Yes, kittens are a very good idea when you're going cycling. Well, I still think there's something we're missing. You guys got to get this one. Please tell me what are we still missing? I know, Dad. Helmets, right? Uh, off we go. Oh. 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 All right, we're done. That was no problem. That was really easy, easy stuff. And, and lots of fun. Hey everyone, Pete here from sportconsumer.com. And I do have something really important to talk to you about today. But before I really get into the details, I got to tell you, if you guys hear what sounds like gunshots when I'm talking, you got to forgive me. It's not a gunshot. Uh, I happen to live in the middle of wine country. Right behind me is a vineyard. And um, I'm kind of out in the country. There's some strange noises like cicadas and happens to be a lot of airplanes. And there's also bird bangers, we call them, which are just devices that farmers place in the field. They sound like shotguns and they scare birds away from the vineyard so that they don't lose all their grapes. So um, that will happen a number of times. I'm just warning you, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be too distracting. Um, guys, today I really want to talk about something that is really near and dear to my family and that is uh, sports in general, but specifically cycling and um, helmets. Uh, I have a brother, He's uh, he was a few years older than me, this was way back about 30 years ago, and he um, sustained fatal injuries in a bicycle accident. He was hit by a pickup truck whose vision was obscured because of a setting sun, and he was um, thrown from his bike and his head hit uh, just some, some uh, is the, basically the, the bottom of a ditch that was kind of hard, and he, he never recovered. He was in hospital for a few days in ICU. So the topic is near and dear to my heart, and I know that it is for many of you. Uh, very likely some of you know someone who has been lost in an accident of this sort. So the, the, the question that first came to my mind before we even talk about uh, the specifics of uh, bicycle helmets is why should you have a helmet? I mean, it didn't seem to help my brother. Now that was because it was about 30 years ago and the helmets were not that good and I know specifically what the problem was. 
um, and I can I'll touch base on that a bit later but I can tell you that statistically it's a no-brainer literally no-brainer that wearing bicycle helmets does save lives in the instances where people are hit by a car or or lose control of a bike and fall down they actually do save lives and injuries so nobody really contests that I will tell you that there is an anti bike helmet argument I don't think it's a great argument but it is an argument and what it says is that if you force somebody to wear a bike helmet their level of enjoyment will decrease because they don't want to be told what to do and so as a result they're probably not going to ride their bike as much or at all but the health benefits of riding a bike say the statistics um, far outweigh any safety concerns about getting hit by a car or having an accident of some kind and so even if everybody who rode a bike did not wear a helmet and there were more fatalities from 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 lack of wearing a helmet the society in general would be would be healthier because of all the health benefits of riding a bike I mean it's an argument I think it's a poor one I don't think this decreases enjoyment at all in fact you know get the right helmet it can kind of make you look cool I mean I, I've never seen anybody you know on the world-class elite level Tour de France cyclists riding without a helmet they usually have some pretty cool helmets um, so I have no problem with that anyway those are the arguments and that that's where there is some controversy there is one other little bit of controversy and that is that studies do show that people who wear helmets are willing to take more risks not only are you willing to take more risks if you have a helmet because you think well you know I, I won't be able to get hurt as easily but do you know that that drivers motorists that are approaching cyclists with helmets are also willing to take more risks they will drive closer to the cyclists and this is actually a study that's been done I, I didn't do it I'm just telling you what I've researched and uh, because they figure well the guy's got a helmet so in the unlikely chance that I the motorist might hit that cyclist well yeah you know he, he's got a better chance of survival that's the kind of reasoning that's out there so yikes <laughs> I don't know what to tell you other than overall I think helmets are a good idea the heart and soul of a bicycle helmet is a compressed styrofoam uh, it's called EPS expanded polystyrene and it's just a really really hard uh, styrofoam that is meant to crush basically and and kind of move and um, um, take the impact uh, when you have a, a crash okay so uh, in my in my brother's case it it did just that but that wasn't quite enough um, in those days there was not this sort of uh, glossy shell on top of uh, a typical bicycle helmet and now uh, mo pretty much every bicycle helmet has this this plastic shell on top of the styrofoam the EPS and the reason for it is that it not only does it keep the helmet together a bit better and add some structure it it helps for um, uh, aerodynamics and wind it also really important it also allows for uh, a, not only another layer to the to the um, separation between the impact and the brain but when you hit an object whether it's a hard object or even a soft object like dirt and grass the the glossiness of the cover allows there to be some sliding without um, any sort of catching of that and and friction so in my brother's case he didn't have the um, the glossy um, plastic surface and so what happened was when his uh, helmet hit the ground it it, it, it didn't slide it kind of twisted and it kind of you know there's just a lot of friction and we don't want friction when your head hits the pavement all right so that's that's the second line of protection actually the first line of protection would be the 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 shell and then the EPS uh, styrofoam some helmets have what's called slip plane technology and what that is is it's another layer I would call it the third layer of protection it's inside the helmet this helmet actually doesn't have it but I am gonna look for one that does have it very very soon and what it is is it's a liner typically it's a liner inside the helmet inside the EPS styrofoam 
and it moves around a little bit. And the idea is that it just adds one more layer of movement. So when your helmet contacts the ground and there is some friction, that little bit of movement where your head can, it just kind of does this, a little bit of movement. And um, uh, that can be the difference between an injury or, or a, a more uh, serious injury or not. The next item uh, that you want to consider when buying a, uh, a bicycle helmet is the retention system. Now most helmets have this thing, I don't know if you can see it, this is a dial and the dial uh, just makes it tighter, it fits perfectly on your head. This, the first helmet I, I got did not have anything like this and it's very awkward and difficult to pull straps and cables and Velcro to try to make it fit your head and even then it's not perfect but this dial system is wonderful and uh, so it just helps fit to your, fit your head to your head very very snugly the other thing that I really appreciate is this visor visors I used to think they just look cool but the other thing they do they really do add comfort and safety comfort being you're not squinting as much from the Sun sometimes I don't even wear uh, glasses when I'm riding but safety definitely uh, for the same reason if, if you're blocking the Sun out you can actually see better uh, which really was the cause of my brother's accident. It wasn't on his part that he couldn't see as well, but on the part of the driver. So I'm big on cutting out the sun from your eyes so you can actually see what you're doing, and that'll help uh, overall for safety, obviously. One of the other items to consider is, are you doing your riding, let's say, in an urban center or uh, at night, or especially both? And if you are, then you'll probably want to consider a helmet with both reflective strips built in and a built-in integrated light. I'm sure you've seen them and of course you can buy them as aftermarket products, but it's just, you know, if that's what you're going to do, you may as well get a helmet that, that has it built in so you're not worrying about things peeling off as easily or falling off. Uh, just get it integrated, I would suggest. Another type of biking to consider, I mean, if, if you, I, I mentioned about the urban, um, that's one sort of main purpose you might have your helmet for, but there are other people who are just looking for daytime riding on the road, and if you're looking for a road helmet, um, you probably have the biggest selection out there and the most comfortable helmets because they have, while well, they have excellent protection, they're probably the least protective of the other options. Um, a road helmet will have bigger ventilation holes, probably doesn't go down as far on the back, just about here, and, um, and it is definitely the lightest. However, you might, might want to consider another helmet if you are into trail riding. There are helmets specifically for trail riding and they are a little bit heavier but there is more protection the sides go down a little bit more uh, they'll drop down behind your ear a little bit more and they'll drop down behind the back of your head a bit more just because you've got some crazy riding you're doing on trails and the odds of you falling are increased a bit over road biking and then the final type of helmet that I'll just mention there are others of course for competition and aerodynamics and all that stuff but basically for normal people um, there is a helmet that's called enduro and what it is is it's like a trail riding helmet but it has um, a removable uh, chin guard so it looks like uh, almost like a motocross riding uh, like a motorbike uh, helmet for, for dirt biking and um, that just adds another layer of protection of course for your chin. They're often used for guys who do downhill uh, off-road racing and they're going downhill so fast that yeah you're gonna want an extra bit of protection on your chin. You're staring down, you're going down, um, I would wear something here as well. You can take it a step further and you can get fancier helmets even than that that have like a built-in non-removable protection. I mean we're talking this is like a motorcycle helmet now and uh, yeah, it really, really does have a high level of protection, but it sacrifices a lot of other things, like it's really heavy and the ventilation is just poor. So if you buy one of those helmets, you better make sure you really need it, like you're going downhill like crazy and <laughs> your life is in danger every second that you're on that bike, then you're going to want that kind of helmet. So those are some of the more common uses and there are specifically made helmets just for those. That's something I'm going to leave to you to research. I've got another bit of good news about helmets and that is that the more money you pay for a helmet 
does not increase the safety capabilities of that helmet. Just about every helmet has to have certain safety specifications. And in, uh, in North America, there's a, a designation, a safety designation called the CPSC uh, certification. There are others. There's, uh, there's one called ASTM uh, and Snell. These are, these are um, uh, organizations that certify the safety of helmets and uh, we could get into all the details of which one's good, which ones, you know, uh, maybe are better than other. It doesn't matter. If it has uh, at least one of these designations, uh, you're probably good to go. If you get it from a reputable store or a reputable online company like Amazon is a good one, uh, they'll have certified helmets there. So. You can find a lot of these helmets on our website, sportconsumer.com, but um, what I always tell people if you've seen my other videos is don't take off right now and watch because YouTube, uh, sorry, don't take off to my website now because YouTube doesn't like it when YouTube viewers leave YouTube. So I always say, you know, check out some of these other videos we've got uh, and then when that's done you can head over to sportconsumer.com and uh, check out some of our latest recommendations. I'm not making any recommendations in this video only because the, the best helmets change every year and um, there's no sense in me making a new video every time a new helmet comes out. Uh, I would just like to give you an overall sort of a blueprint that you can use to uh, figure out how to choose the best helmet. And there are lots of other good videos out there from companies that sell helmets. You'll see them on YouTube if you type in how to choose the best cycling helmet. So. Um, the other thing I really do want to talk to you a little bit about is how to, uh, to fit a helmet properly. I'm not going to go into super detail, but probably enough just to get you started. So the first thing is, when you put the helmet on, if it already feels uncomfortable, then I would just move on to another helmet. But probably my guess is that it, it'll feel reasonably good. So then, the next thing you want to do is tighten your retention system so that it feels comfortable and snug and then what you want to do is kind of shake your head around and even turn it upside down like that and shake okay um, mine stays on really well like that and it fits the shape of my head well um, this is not an expensive helmet in fact it was one of the least expensive I could find um, I happen to live in uh, Ontario, Canada, just near Buffalo, New York, and there's a store uh, that I, I got this particular one a few years ago at uh, Canadian Tire. You can't get really, really expensive stuff there. Um, well, I guess you can, but in terms of cycling, you're not getting the high-end stuff. This is a CCM helmet, and um, it works great. It has all the certifications, so it works uh, as well, I, I'm just as confident with it as any other helmet that you can get. Uh, on our website, we do have better helmets that I, I would suggest uh, on SportConsumer.com, and uh, most of them are available on Amazon. And uh, you can see our our, our um, specific recommendations and why we recommend them. All right, so I would do a bit of research. They're not super expensive. You're looking at twenty, thirty, forty, fifty dollars in that range as a life-saving device. Um, I I. Our family owns typically multiple helmets per person because we like them. We just like them. All right, all right, back to how it fits. So make it snug with your retention system on the back of your head. Then um, if you put your finger, you want to get have like a, a snug, barely able to fit finger, say between the shell and your, your, your scalp. Um, and mine does just that. So that's, that's overall, that's a good fit. It feels comfortably are comfortable and then if you take the strap what you want is something that is is gently and loosely touching your skin kind of all the way around and if you go like this and you go like this it doesn't feel like you're being choked in any way all right so that's sort of a, a unofficial way of telling you uh, you've got a, a good strap tension I mentioned earlier that the more money you spend on a helmet does not increase its safety. So then why would you spend more money on a helmet? Why don't you get the cheapest one? Well, a couple of things. First of all, more money will get you a lighter helmet with the same amount of protection. It will get you better ventilation and it often will look better. All right. This one's kind of bulky. I don't mind the way it looks, but it's it's kind of big. I, I you know, I look at myself in the mirror, I kind of think eh, it looks like I got a mushroom head. 
Um, it's not quite that bad, but you can get ones that are smaller and snugger and, and slimmer, and they have as good protection. So uh, the prices vary hugely from 20 something dollars to hundreds of dollars for the same protection. So those are some of the factors to consider. One last thing I'll tell you about is that when you do your research as far as which helmet you're thinking of buying, you might want to look at the crash replacement policy of a particular company. Uh, several comp companies will offer you a replacement helmet at a really discounted price if you've been in a crash. So not sure how that works with every company. Uh, I'm just kind of giving you a basic summary here, but anyway, th that's a good thing to look into. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to mention regarding helmets is that if you've been in any sort of um, collision, uh, I would say all but, you know, a bump like that, anything worse than that, I would say you, you'll want to replace the helmet. The, uh, you know, the companies that offer certification have done the tests and uh, the integrity, they've determined that the integrity of a cycling helmet really decreases rapidly after it's been in a collision. Obviously, if you can see that there's external damage to it or internal inside, uh, you'll want to replace it, of course. But even if you don't see any damage, if you've been in any sort of, uh, you know, mix up, you've fallen on the ground, your head has hit the ground, you still want to replace it. It might be just as good. It might not have any issues. Uh, but for the low, low price of, you know, uh, a couple of dozen dollars, you might want something as good as it can be to save your life. So that's just my thought on that. The other thing is that they say, the same people will say, that after a number of years, I'm not sure exactly what it is, it changes per helmet, but I don't know, three, four years, something like that, that you're supposed to change it anyway, just because age will degrade the integrity of the helmet. That's probably a very good idea. Uh, almost nobody does that, however. And this helmet is probably in that age. It's about three-ish years old now, so I'll probably grab a new helmet pretty soon anyway. All right, guys, hey, I do appreciate you st uh, stopping by, checking out what we have to say here. Um, once again, my name's Pete from sportconsumer.com. I'm kind of the guy who runs the website, but I've got a team that helps me. And uh, our purpose is to really be helpful and maybe offer this much uh, entertainment in our videos but uh, if you found anything even remotely helpful or remotely entertaining I'd really love to see a thumbs up and a subscribe to our channel you won't get bugged by me I won't inundate you with all kinds of notifications and uh, I will not have a video every day um, but I will uh, try to keep you guys informed. If you're into sports overall, my family is, I've got three young kids and a wife that just, we just love to do stuff in general. And so I'll be covering a whole lot of sports that we cover on sportconsumer.com. Probably not everyone because there's over 300 sports and there's things that I just don't do very much like, uh, ride horses. Don't really do that so much. And, um, I don't play football. And they got a lot of stuff about football on Sport Consumer. So who knows? Um, we'll, we'll see how much we can cover, but we offer uh, helpful advice, and we hope that you guys will stop by every now and then. Check us out, and uh, we look forward to bringing you the next video very soon. Oh. And now I turn him around. You can see him. Oh. No, ready? you have to pull That's him. Good. That's good. There, just nicely. Okay, ready, Noah? Yes. Say kitten? Three. Big question mark. Yes. Okay, ready? Three. There you go. We need yes. to see his face. Yes. Three, two. Kitten?